Joining me in Edmonton, Alberta at Breakforth is Dr. John Neufeld, known nationally and internationally for his verse-by-verse -verse expository preaching. After spending almost 35 years in pastoral ministry, now Dr. Neufeld has transitioned and he is the first Canadian Bible teacher for Back to the Bible Canada. Dr. Neufeld, welcome to 100 Huntley Street. Uh, thank you, it's a delight to be here. So, so tell me, after the majority of your ministry, pastoring, and uh -huh. I pastored for 20 years, uh -huh. now back to the Bible, right. did you imagine the change would be as you thought? Well, I don't know what I imagined. Um, I, you know, I, first of all, it just, it's a surprising work of God that I'm actually doing this thing. I had never planned it in my life. God just seemed to open a door. And I just felt that that was God calling me to do that. Um, so it's hard for me to know what to imagine. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first thing is to sit in you know, radio studio as I do, and you're just in a small studio, yeah. and uh, there's nobody to touch, there's nobody to see, you have no idea whether one person's <laughs> listening or, a, you know, or where, whether yeah. a lot of people are listening. It's, uh, it's, it's quite a transition. It does feel like a change of career. Now, do you, do you um, I'm gonna ask you this question. Do you enjoy more being able to see people or look at a microphone? Well, I, yeah, I'm a pastor, 35 years, doesn't get out of your system, right? I mean, I think what I miss most is just praying with people. Mm. Um, I mean, I love preaching, I love teaching the Word of God, I love seeing the transformation in people's lives, I love praying with people, I love watching people change from, in fact, in the last 15 years of being a pastor, I never went a Sunday without seeing someone come to Christ. Mm. So I love that kind of transformation. So this mm. is a change, mm -hmm. but it is a significant one. I'm yeah. loving the change. Now you talk about um, loving to see people come to Christ yeah. and your goal even on radio is to bring people to Jesus. Absolutely. You talk about Dr. Neufeld, two influences that brought you to Jesus Christ at the age of 18. And I want you to take some time and just yeah. explain that story because I think it's an amazing personal testimony yeah. of how you found Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, I was raised in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. um, my folks were refugees. Um, we spoke German at home, and I struggled growing up in terms of which culture do I belong to, the culture of my folks and the church I grew up in, mm -hmm. or the culture of wider Canadian society, which was remarkably different from the refugee status of my folks. Okay. And so I struggled with that and didn't know where to belong and found myself more and more pulled into the culture that I had to live in and in that, I abandoned Christ. Mm. And uh, so I, I just, I was walking my own way. I was kind of, I'd become a manager of a little restaurant. Oh. And uh, you know, I was 18 years old managing a restaurant. 18? 18. 18. Oh my. And, uh, and uh, something you know, marvelous happened to me. Actually, a number of things happened. The first thing that happened is, is somebody had taken me to a testimony meeting in which I heard a guy not sure how he'd come to Christ, but after he came to Christ, how God was changing his life. Now that was cool. Okay. But the second thing that happened is that I had been working in this restaurant and there was a gas station next door and the gas station attendant and I got into a dispute. We got into a fight, um, <laughs> like a, a, fist a fist fight? physical fist fight. <laughs> and uh, I broke my glasses. And so this was in Hope, BC and I had my optometrist in Chilliwack and it was in those days just a single road which was highly trafficked. And so without my glasses, I'm squinting and I always drove fast, so I went to pass a semi-trailer. And I was halfway past a trailer, and I recognized I was on a head-on crash with an oncoming car. Mm. And I just basically stood on the brakes, and the, the semi-trailer beside me was standing on his brakes as well. You know, just smoke coming out. And we were both trying to stop at the same time as his car was coming, and I thought at the last minute, I just veer into the, into the trailer. And, um, and somehow I found myself behind him, and it was just this, and in a split second, that, that car just came roaring by me. And yeah. I found the first place to stop, I was shaking. And I thought Imagine. to myself, I was one millisecond away from eternity and I'm not prepared to meet God. I mean, that was the transitional point in my life. I, to this day, believe that God put me precisely in that point mm -hmm. so that I finally see the brevity of life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the next thing that really happened is I had a very dear pastor who had come to my home church. And, um, and I remember making an appointment with him and I decided that I would shock him by telling him, you know, all of the, the kind of life that I was now yeah. leading. And, I, and my sense would be that he would berate me for it. And instead of doing that, he stood up from behind his desk. I still see it to this day. Mm -hmm. You know, I told him who I was. And I remember saying to him, what do you think of me now? 
And he stood up from behind his desk and he said, I'll tell you what I think. And he crossed over to the desk, put his arms around me, said, I think I love you. Hmm. And I ran from his office. I broke the embrace, ran out of the office. I was weeping. And, um, and he just, he just uh, touched my life. I, I, I thought, what if God's like this man? What if in spite of who I am, God still loves me? That was such a moving moment. And so it wasn't far after that that I kind of parked my car right outside of Hope, B.C., the very place where they made the Rambo movie way years ago. Okay, but yeah. in that time, that hadn't been made yet. Mm -hmm. And I parked my car outside that bridge, and I poured out my heart to God and surrendered my life to Christ. That's, that's, that's how I got here. And that's where you made your confession, Lord, I need you to change my life. <sighs> yeah. As people say, you invited Christ into your heart. I invited Christ in my heart. I surrendered my life. I said, Christ, do anything you want with my life. Although I must say, at that point in time, I had said to the Lord, but please don't make me a pastor. No. <laughs> I did not want to be a pastor. <laughs> I thought, you know, maybe God will be merciful to me, but that kind of mercy didn't come to me. Yeah. Really? Now, can I ask you this? You're a Bible teacher. Yeah. When you made that commitment to Christ, People always would ask me, is it something you're supposed to feel or is it just like a knowing in your mind? Yeah. Do you remember that moment, what it was like? I remember that deep sense of peace with God. I remember the warfare was over. I remember at that point knowing that I was no longer a rebel against God's purposes, but that God had made me his child. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was that deep flood of peace. There was no warfare between God and I. That, that I do remember. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you, you made a statement, and we'll kind of conclude with this, um, and I love how you say it, God having plans for me yeah. while I was planning other things. Yeah, I was planning other things. I was planning wealth. I was planning, uh, my folks had a farm. I thought maybe I would take that farm over. Maybe I would just go on in business. Uh, I thought I had some acumen for it. And so I had all these other plans in my life. And God, through those series of events that I just outlined, simply interrupted me, got in my way, and said, that's not the way you're going to go. In spite of my own choices, God said, I've made my choice, I've made you mine. Mm. Um, that, that's my story. Mm. Yeah. Dr. Newfield, do you just mind taking about 30 seconds, just looking at that camera, yeah. just encouraging someone who's watching to make that surrender, to yeah. give their life to Christ? Yeah, there is nothing greater that can happen to anyone than to say, Jesus, I surrender my life into your hands. I believe that Christ died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you love me, and here's my life. You, it's yours. Take me and use me in the way that you want me to. Come, Lord Jesus, invade my heart and make me your own. Mm. If you, along with Dr. Newfeld, have made that personal commitment, just right where you are in your heart, I invite you, please call our prayer lines, 1-866-273-4444. Someone's there wants to hear what you've got to say, pray with you, and thank you so much for making that incredible decision. Dr. Newfeld, appreciate you being with us here today on One Hundred on the Street. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be right back.